<laughs> I've really had it with these people. Remember back when Trump took out that Iranian terrorist and the media reacted by describing that terrorist as an austere scholar? Well, here we go again. You think that they can't possibly expose and discredit themselves any further, but they always seem to find a way. After news came that former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe had been assassinated by a lunatic with a homemade shotgun, the corrupt Democrat state media immediately jumped at the chance to give us all the Communist Chinese Party perspective and use it all for their own political benefit a polarizing figure he was a right-wing nationalist and conservative and a fierce supporter of japan's military he fought to amend the country's pacifist constitution in the face of the rising threat from china seriously is the ccp employing these people while in office abe met former president donald trump several times to reaffirm japan's military and trade alliances with the united states his political opinions were controversial. Why? It's almost as if they're implying that he deserved to be shot. A great man and ally has just been assassinated and they use it to demonize him in the exact same way they demonize Trump and the rest of the Democrats opponents. And for that matter, opponents of the CCP. On that note, it does look increasingly like the Democrat party and the CCP are aligned, not only by ideologies, but by a common enemy. Us. But now we have even more blatant examples with Joe Biden actually taking American petroleum stockpiles and selling them to his son's CCP business partners, which is just straight up insane no matter how you look at it. Now I'm sure the media is going to cover this story, right? Right? Back to the CCP compromised CBS News hack. I seem to remember her from something in the recent past. Hmm. This is not just a mourning procession, it's a political message designed to demonstrate that all Iranians are united in anger and in outrage against the United States. I just uh, say the sentence uh, the, for the President Trump, you deep your grave. Soleimani's daughter was also on hand. Her father's death, she said, would bring dark days to America. So this is all starting to make sense. Her friends are enemies of America and Donald Trump. Now, as you might have guessed, CBS News was not alone in their attacks on Shinzo. NPR and the Associated Press got in on it too. For example, the so-called National Public Radio Outlet described the former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe as a, quote, divisive arch conservative. From an NPR article, former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, an ultra-nationalist who served in the post longer than anyone else before stepping down in 2020, was shot in killed on Friday at a campaign rally. It's almost as if they're implying that he deserved to be shot. After all, they always use labels like right wing or nationalist as derogatory labels, but they do not ever use labels like left wing, socialist or communist as derogatory labels. Case in point, these same people had very glowing things to say about Fidel Castro and his family after he died. The 90 year old was still a potent symbol of the revolution. What was the best thing he did? for the Cuban people. I mean, the education, health. Fidel Castro, because of what he did in education and health care, or hate him because of civil rights and human rights. There is no doubt that he is considered here a revolutionary hero, not only in Cuba, but in many places around the world. Bernie out there with, yeah, you know, this dictator isn't so horrible. Yeah, he's horrible. He did one good yeah. thing, he said. I don't think, yeah. well, <laughs> by the way, that, that literacy program that he was talking about mm -hmm. was a re-education program. Yes, it was. <laughs> There's a big difference. There you I am introduced to Ramon Castro, and it's kind of jarring because even though he was Fidel's older brother, he looks a lot like him. As he's presented to me, he leans over and gives me a kiss on one cheek and says, this is from Raul, kisses me on the other cheek and says, this is from me. And then he kisses me on the forehead and says, this is from Fidel. It was kind of like getting the blessing of the Holy Trinity. Yes, you heard right. 
this publicly funded far left propagandist from NPR actually described a kiss from Fidel Castro after he died as quote, it was kind of like getting a blessing of the Holy Trinity. Lastly, I wanted to thank one of this channel's very generous viewers who goes by the name Drunk Batman. He sent me this amazing wood burn sign of my logo that he made himself. I absolutely love it and I plan on putting it up somewhere here in the background. Thanks again, Drunk Batman. I'll see you in Fortnite. Ah, gay. Alrighty, that's all I have for that one. As always, please drag and punch that like button, share, subscribe, then leave a comment to vent your frustrations. Thanks a lot. Have a great weekend.